Well, welcome to Christian Answers. This is Pastor Jeff Short with another topic of interest from a biblical Christian perspective. Today, we're going to be talking about the whole situation with this young couple that have died and the circumstances around their death was a big mystery for our nation and it was in the news for a lot of time. And now we are finally finding out what happened and it's really a a tragic situation. I think it's due also in part to a secular world and the value systems of that secular world. But we'll talk about that. A lot to talk about. One of the uh, big topics that I will cover quite a bit and that is the reversal of Roe v. Wade. Praise be to God. That awful decision has been reversed. But I want to take some time to reflect on what is going to be happening next and what this means to our country from a biblical Christian perspective. So I want to tackle that at another time today. I want to deal with this resolution, it looks like, to the situation with this Brian Laundrie and Gabby Petito story, tragedy actually. And we're finding out more and more about it. And finally, we can kind of understand what happened. And the thing I wanna talk about is the reaction of the boyfriend, Brian Laundrie, because this is something that nobody is really talking about. And that is the covering of this from why did he do what he did and what does that say about our values here in a secular culture Uh, i think a person who was following god closely and who believed in prayer and read the bible on a regular basis attended church would have reacted differently to this same situation i think the bible would have given him principles and truths to take action and it would have been a, a lot different But let's get into the article and find out what it says. Um, The headline is that pages from Brian Laundrie's, the girlfriend's boyfriend, notebook show he wrote, I ended her life, I thought it was merciful. So it looks like the boyfriend decided to take it upon himself to end his girlfriend's life for some reason as a mercy killing. So he killed her in response to what some situation that occurred. And so let's read on. It says that um, Brian Laundrie's notebook appears to include a confession that he killed Gabby Petito. I ended her life. I thought it was merciful. That is what she wanted, uh, it said in his notebook. Laundry also said he chose to kill himself because he couldn't live another day without her. So in other words, he, he committed suicide. He killed his girlfriend. And then days or weeks later, he took his own life. He killed his, himself in an act of suicide. So we're seeing all kinds of actions being taken, all kinds of judgments being made, all kinds of values being lived out, and they're not biblical Christian values. They are not things that you would learn to do in church. They are not things that you would learn to do by reading the Bible. They are not things that you would learn to do by spending time in prayer and being immersed in a Christian culture. No, these are things that people who live by their own values, play by their own rules, and make things up as they go along in a secular, godless, pagan world. That's what they would do. And so what I'm saying is that this Brian Laundrie decided that he was going to take things into his own hands and make all kinds of very, very important judgments about life and death, about the life and death of his girlfriend and his own life. So let's read further. Brian Laundrie's notebook, recovered from a Florida swamp by the FBI, appears to include a confession that he was the one who killed Gabby Petito. And that's what 
the news reporters were speculating that happened. Somehow he killed her and then fled, came back to the house, and then weeks later disappeared again, only to show that he had ended his own life. The notebook says, I ended her life. I thought it was merciful. That is what she wanted. But I see now all the mistakes I made. I panicked and I was in shock. So some situation uh, caused, according to Brian Laundrie's notebook, this Gabby Petito, the young woman, she was asking him to take her life. So we can only speculate. He wrote to Ch he wrote that he chose to kill her after she injured herself from a fall in Wyoming. So she was rock climbing. They were out west. They were climbing along a ledge. They were climbing in the mountains. And she must have fallen. Um, the problem is that as human beings, we don't have that right to choose when a person lives and dies. And even if they're saying to us, please kill me, no. Um, you try to contact authorities, you try to solve the situation, but you don't take life and death in your own hands. You don't decide that you're going to be the judge, jury, and executioner of someone, uh, even if they're pleading with you to kill them. And then, for example, if he did choose a mercy killing, if she have, was asking or requesting that he kill her, then you don't run away. You go immediately to the authorities and say, this is exactly what happened. And you follow the rules. You, you try to not be as reckless and lawless and make up your own rules as you go along. But again, these were young people. It doesn't sound like they were educated in the ways of Christianity in the Bible. It sounded like they were just out there doing their own thing. And then when something bad happened, they just decided to make up their own rules. And it sounded like he began to dig himself into a ditch as he was making up his own rules. That's why we don't make our own rules up as Christians. That's why we follow and trust the will of God, the moral and ethical will of God that is taught in the Bible and is taught by Christianity. We follow God and trust that he will work things out. Now, if he did, in fact, have to do a mercy killing, then he should have trusted himself to the Lord and explained that to the authorities and said, I didn't want to, but she was requesting, this is what happened. She fell, she hit her head, she was in great pain, whatever the situation was, but he did not do that. He wrote that he chose to kill her after she injured herself from a fall in Wyoming. From the moment I decided, took away her pain, I knew I couldn't go on without her, Laundry wrote. Laundry and Petito set out a cross-country trip in the fall of 2021 that ended in both of their deaths. They had heavily documented their travels on social media, and it was made public that Petito went missing September 11th. Laundry returned home to his parents' house in Florida until he, too, went missing September 13th, shortly after he was named a person of interest in Petito's death. So... He was worried that he would be, what, charged with murder? Um, again, if you have a tragic situation, even if you did a mercy killing, I'm sure that there might be consequences for that, but you don't decide on your own that you are going to now kill yourself. There is no biblical justification for suicide, and that is not the will of God. That is the will of man. That is man's solution to a human problem. And he not only took it upon himself to kill his girlfriend, we don't know the circumstances, but again, very questionable judgment, 
And then he took it upon himself to kill himself. Uh, clearly a wrong, sinful decision on his own part. But again, if you're operating from a system that you make up your own, this is taught in the schools all the time. Values clarification. You have to come up with your own values. Uh, you shouldn't rely on any external values. Um, they're teaching in the schools. Do what you, you will. Uh, do your own thing. Uh, you have autonomy over your life. This is not a Christian framework for morality. And he was just making it up as he went along. And he got himself into a lot of trouble. And then finally, he brought upon himself his own death. Petito's body was found at a remote campsite in the Bridger Teton National Forest, September 19th. Her cause of death was unclear at first, but nearly a month later, the Teton County Coroner said Petito's cause of death was strangulation. Well, what about injury? What about broken bones? What about, okay, if, if she fell off a cliff or she fell on some rocks, uh, wouldn't that have been very clear in the autopsy that she had trauma to her head or she had broken ribs that could have affected her heart? Why wasn't that brought out? The only thing at least we know here was the cause of death was strangulation. It wasn't until October 21st that authorities found remains confirmed to be laundries in Florida's Carlton Reserve. They also recovered a backpack full of things, including the notebook. The medical examiner on November 23rd ruled Laundrie's death a suicide. I loved you more than anything, the note, which is addressed to Gabby in Laundrie's notebook, continued according to Fox News images. I can't bear to look at our photos to recall great times because it is why I cannot go on. When I close my eyes, I will think of laying on the roof of the van, falling asleep to the site of meteor shower at Crystal Geyser. I will always love you. He apologized to everyone this will affect, namely Petito's family, whom he wrote he loves. Please do not make this harder for them. This occurred as an unexpected tragedy. So he's claiming here that this injury that Gabby Petito suffered was an unexpected injury. Again, do we have do we have confirmation, autopsy confirmation that this is in fact true? In the note, Laundry described the injury he said Petito suffered, saying that he heard a splash and a scream near where they were camping in Utah, where Laundry said the temperatures were below freezing. When he said he found her in the water, he said that she was freezing cold and had a small bump on her forehead that eventually got larger. He said he tried to carry her to safety but was unsure where the car was parked and that Petito wouldn't let him carry her back across the creek she fell into. Okay, so this scenario seems to be indicating that she somehow fell into this creek that was freezing and that she had hit her head and that she was freezing cold. He described lying with Petito who would get angry whenever Laundry shook her awake from sleep. He said because he was fearful she had a concussion. So she was suffering he said that he did not know the extent of her injuries, only that she was in extreme pain. Okay. Laundry wrote that he then rushed home to spend any time I had left with my family. So according to the autopsy, strangulation was the cause of death. So it looks like at some point at her request, he strangled her to put her out of her misery. Again, we don't know to the extent, what extent she had injuries. And here were two young people, uh, teenagers, who were making life and death decisions. And one was 
telling the other one to kill them, and the other one went ahead. The Brian Laundry decided, yeah, I will kill my girlfriend at her request, and so he strangled her. Um, Laundry wrote, then he rushed home to spend any time he, he had left with my family. Again, why not go to the authorities? Why not explain exactly what happened? If it's a tragedy like he was describing, then you have to be there and tell people and you have to tell the family and explain to the family the, the details and say, I didn't suggest that she die, but she requested that I kill her. Um, but again, that's pretty hard to explain. I mean, why not do everything you can to keep her alive to get her to the hospital, to get her to a doctor's office, to find that van or whatever, but to just make a decision like, okay, I'm going to kill my girlfriend because she's injured, not knowing the extent of the injuries. Yeah, maybe she was in a lot of pain, but pain alone is not a justification to kill someone. Say someone has a bad toothache and they're in terrible pain. And somebody says, hey, kill me. No, you're not going to kill them. That is God's choice, not man's choice. Certainly not a 19-year-old kid's choice. Laundry wrote that he then rushed home to spend time with, left with his family. So he's got this plan in his mind. He's going to uh, kill himself or something. He added that he considered driving north to where Petito's family lived and letting her stepdad or brother kill him, as I'm sure they would have liked to. What? No, we don't, we don't do the revenge killing. Uh, that's been uh, thousands of years, or at least in the Western world, uh, a, thousand, a thousand years or so. Uh, I'm sure that that happened in other parts of the world and or maybe even still happens in the Arab world. The revenge killing where one family comes after the, the, the murderer in another family or so on and so forth. But why would he jump to the conclusion that their family would kill him? It's just, this is what happens when you try to be God and you try to to make up everything as it goes along and you try to make up your own values and you make up your decisions based on your own fiat values. So now he's building the scenario that the family of Gabby Petito would want to kill him. So he was thinking of going to their home so that he would say, please kill me. It's, it's insanity. He's not functioning under wisdom. And this is what Proverbs talks about. If you want uh, wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I have no clue or indication that this young couple was operating under a Christian worldview. I am ending my life not because of the fear of punishment, but rather because I can't stand to live another day without her. I've lost our whole future together, every moment we could have cherished. Um, I'm sorry for everyone's loss. Please do not make my life harder for my family. They lost a son and a daughter. The most wonderful girl in the world, Gabby. I'm sorry. So it just sounds like his foolishness just compounded the problem. He made one bad decision after one bad decision after one bad decision, and it turned out everything blew up and ended in the death of two people. I have killed myself by this creek in hopes that animals may tear me apart, that I may make some of her family happy. Please pick up all my things. Gabby hated people who lived. Gee, this is such a tragedy. So he is killing himself and hoping that animals tear him apart as a punishment for what he did. Um, and he's saying that that would make some of her family happy. So again, here is this idea that her family would be after his blood. 
that her family would try to kill him or want him dead or just ha had this hatred. But if the story was as he was telling it, why would they do that? If the story was as he said it was in his notebook, then they would understand. They would not be happy. They would be sad. They would be in sorrow. They would understand the tragedy. But they would not want him dead. They would be mad at him for maybe getting her in the situation upon which she died. Or, you know, that whole situation, you could, you could be mad at both of them for doing what they did. First of all, again, from a Christian worldview, here are two young people not married, okay? They're single. They're living together, basically, in a van, traveling out west as if they're man and wife, as if they're married. Okay, that in itself is wrong. It's a sin. And from a Christian perspective, no decent young people, no Christian young people would be living together in a van traveling out west, acting like they're on some kind of honeymoon or something. This is something that maybe a married couple would do on their honeymoon, but they weren't married. They were just single and they're making up the moral universe as they go along. So they're out there on their own, playing by their own rules, um, making it up as they go along. Uh, have they, uh, Evidently they had no uh, inkling that there was a will of God, that God had a will for human beings, uh, for, for couples who are in love. Uh, they evidently could care less about the marriage covenant, that was not something they respected. So they're out there living the life, I guess, as they thought it, and, and putting it on social media and getting a lot of views from fans. But then something goes wrong, as it inevitably will in life. And she slips into this creek or she falls from a, a mountain cliff into this creek and injures herself and she's in a lot of pain. But uh, again, being in pain does not mean that you request someone to kill you. If that's what happened, again, we don't have all the details, but I'm sure there are a lot of people in a lot of situations in life who injure themselves and are in intense pain, who would, in their mind, that idea might cross, hey, I, I almost wish I were dead. Uh, like even headaches, you know, migraine headaches. You could see a person thinking that they wish they were dead. But you don't actually ask someone to kill you. You don't actually turn to someone near you and say, hey, you know, I'm in a lot of pain. Would you please um, kill me and put me out of my misery? Again, no, that's not a Christian value. That is not God's will. Again, we don't know the extent of her injuries. Um, maybe it was a injury that would have killed her. Maybe it was an injury that would have crippled her. But wouldn't it have been better to have her crippled for life and maybe have to uh, operate from a wheelchair? Um, or it's just a, not a situation to make that call way out there. You need to find out what your situation is. And even if she had to lose an, a limb, uh, lose an arm or whatever her situation was, if, whether there were bones broken, we don't know anything about that. Uh, the coroner did not seem to indicate that the death, uh, there was something, uh, I, not in this report, wrong, um, that she suffered concussion or whatever. She was in a lot of pain, according to the notebook by Brian Laundrie, and she did request that he put her out of her misery, according to Brian Laundrie. Again, we don't know. 
if that whole scenario is true or not. You know, maybe he made it up. Maybe they actually got into a fight. Maybe they actually got into a fight and he hit her or pushed her or she hit her head after he pushed her. It, it doesn't matter um, because they're both dead. It does matter, but we don't have any evidence and we're relying only on a book that he wrote, his journal. And so it just seems like a person operating from a Christian worldview would have reacted differently to this circumstance. First of all, they wouldn't have been out there traveling as singles alone as if they're men and women, men and married couple, men and wife. So that's right off the bat, they wouldn't have been doing that. But let's say that they were a Christian couple, they had just gotten married, this was their honeymoon. What would happen if one of them got injured? Well, you certainly would want to stay with that person. If you couldn't get help, you'd want to stay with that person. And you'd want to try to comfort them as much as you could. But to kill them? To, to take their own life? Um, you'd want to try to help ease the pain as much. But, you know, that's, that's probably a step too far. And I don't think there's any justification. Now, if you did... Go ahead and say, okay, I will do this. I don't want to, but I will. Um, you're requesting this. And you did take the person's life because they were telling you that they're going to die anyway or you felt that they were going to die and it would be a suffering. Um, you certainly would not flee that. You would go to the authorities. You would go to the police and say, this is exactly what happened and I'm sad and I'm heartbroken and everything's really tragic but this is exactly what happened you would explain to the family what happened and everybody would understand not running around talking about presenting yourself to their families so that they could kill you or all this foolishness this is this is partly the fault of a of a mind of a person who is acting foolish and in response to a tragic situation. And when the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord as the beginning of wisdom in Proverbs, when Proverbs talks about getting wisdom is the most important thing, it's not joking, it's serious. This is why we need the wisdom of God. This is why we need to know how to pray before these tragedies take place. We need to know how to respond in the midst of a tragic situation. And we need to ask ourselves, are we ready? Are we equipped? Do we have the wisdom of God that we could deal with a situation like this and really act in a wise way? Or are we going to turn and be foolish like this Brian Laundrie was and then cause make a bad situation even worse? So that's the um, tragic conclusion to this sad saga. We'll talk to you back next week on another edition. God bless.